Welcome back. The details. President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi, the, the Supreme Commander of the Armed Forces, held a meeting with the Supreme Council of the Armed Forces on Sunday, during which the head of a state instructed to arrest all the terrorists in North Sinai and to uproot, uh, the, uh, uproot terrorism in the peninsula. The head of a state also directed to continue carrying out the security measures needed to enhance safety and security in Sinai. On his official Facebook page, President Abdel Fattah Sisi earlier mourned the martyrs of the armed forces, saying that the sincere sons of Egypt are still sacrificing their souls for the sake of the homeland. The president, the supreme commander of the armed forces, added that those coward attacks will never shake the army's will to uproot terrorism. The head of state offered his condolences to the Egyptians and the army and wished to the injured a speedy recovery. Earlier, Army spokesperson uh, Colonel Raib Abdel Hafid said that an officer and 10 soldiers fell martyrs after foiling a terrorist attack in western Sinai. Abdel Hafid added that during the engagement with the terrorists, an officer and 10 soldiers were martyred and five were wounded, adding that the troops are combing the area in search for the fleeing terrorists and surrounding them in an isolated area, western Sinai. This came at the UN Bureau in Egypt mourning the army martyrs of West Sinai attack on Sunday. The National Elections Authority also mourned army martyrs of the West Sinai attack. Uh, earlier, state institutions and public figures expressed grief over the event. In a statement released by the Cabinet Prime Minister, Dr. Mustafa Madbouli expressed his deep condolences to the armed forces and the families of the martyrs, asserting that the state will continue its development and construction path and its battle uh, fighting terrorism. Meanwhile, Sinai Union mourned the martyrs of the nation and stressed that such a coward act will not deter determination on continuing the battle along with the army until the complete eradication of all terrorists. A number of state institutions also mourned the armed forces martyrs who sacrificed their lives defending the country. Al Azhar condemned the terrorist attack, stressing that uh, Al Azhar stood side by side with the armed forces and police in their battle combating terrorism. For his part, Minister of Endowments, Dr. Mohammed Mukhtar Guma, asserted that such, such attacks will only make the great Egyptian people and the army more insisting on facing the, those groups. Also, the head of the Coptic Orthodox Church, Pope Tawadar II condemned with the harshest terms the terrorist attack and wished the injured a speedy recovery, asking God Almighty to uh, um, put his mercy on the late heroes. Head of the media authority, Hussein Zain, also warned the army martyrs and condemned the terrorist attack, describing it as another proof which reflected the ugly face of terrorism. In the same context, the National Union for Public Action also condemned the terrorist attack which took place in Sinai on Saturday and ended with the martyrdom of 11 heroes of the armed forces. The Union stressed its full support to the army in its uh, relentless efforts to uh, uproot terrorism, asking God Almighty to have his mercy on the late troops and wish to the injured a speedy recovery. This came during the seventh meeting of the Union in a series of meetings held to discuss presidential directives regarding uh, social protection network measures implemented nationwide. In this context, the Union announced the launch of the second phase of Wasl al Khir initiative till the end of the year 2022. Foreign Minister Sameh Shukri, the appointed president of the UN Climate Change Conference COP27, held a meeting with the Secretary General of the World Meteorological Organization, Petri Talas, on Sunday. The meeting discussed cooperation with the organization ahead of holding the COP27 in Egypt due to take place later this year in the Resi Resort of Sharm el Sheikh. It also focused on including water issues in the climate fight in light of the global interest in dealing with climate change repercussions, which include water scarcity.
The 20 Egyptian sailors who were detained in Yemen have arrived back home on Sunday after their release was secured. Upon presidential directives to the concerned authorities, the issue of the sailors was ended in a short time in a safe return. Upon the sailors' arrival, they expressed gratitude to President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi and stressed their full confidence in the abilities of the state in managing any crisis under his wise leadership. Lebanese expats in 48 countries, including France and the United Arab Emirates, voted on Sunday ahead of the May 15th parliamentary elections. The critical election comes amid an unprecedented financial crisis that